Welcome to Lifeline, a production of Lifeline Media and United Christian Fellowship of Arlington, where Reverend George Effingham serves as senior pastor and we share the word to impact the world. Join us now as we hear the word from the Lord in our Sunday worship service.
from his enemies who continued to seek his destruction. And in verses 13 and 14, it closes with a testimony of how faith in God had kept him from giving up in difficult times. And he appealed to the people of Israel to always trust God and wait patiently for him. Today's sermon is drawn from verses 11 through 14 of our text. And it focuses our attention on the need to wait patiently for God in difficult times. The word patience is sometimes rendered long-suffering in the Bible. And it is the ability to endure difficulty based on faith in God. The ability to endure difficulty based on our faith in God. It is the ability to, to endure a difficult situation based on the belief that God is watching over us and that God will deliver us at his appointed time. Patience is one of the fruit of the Spirit that is listed for us in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. The fruit of long suffering. It means that Patience is one of the character traits that the Holy Spirit is working to develop in us as believers as he continues to conform us to the image of Christ. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, that is patience. What this means is that one of the things that the Holy Spirit is doing in all of our lives as believers in Christ is that the Holy Spirit is working to teach us patience. Why is the Holy Spirit working to teach us patience? Because God is patient. And the will of the Holy Spirit for us is that we will be conformed to the image of Christ. And so the Holy Spirit is working in your life right now as a believer to teach you to be patient. To be patient with people in your life. To be patient with your plans for life. Because to be patient is to be like God. One of the attributes of God is that God is patient or long suffering. God is patient. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible talks about the patience of God. It says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, like some kind of slackness. But his long suffering toward us is patient with us. Why? Because he is not willing that any should perish. But his desire is that all should come to repentance. God wants you to be patient. Because the more patient you are, the more like God you become. Unfortunately, patience appears, or impatience appears, to be one thing that is deemed to be acceptable in the church. Some Christians, and uh, sometimes Christians, are the most impatient with one another, even though every one of us benefits from the patience of God every day. We benefit from God's patience, but we have a hard time being patient with one another. We need patience 
in every aspect of our lives. We need patience in marriage. We need patience with our children. We need patience with our parents. We need patience in our relationships. We need patience in our work. We need patience in our businesses. We need patience in our school. We need patience in our career. We need patience in the church. We need patience in the reopening of the church. But most of all, we need patience in our relationship with God. Without patience, we will sin against God and we will miss out on the fullness of his bountiful blessings that have been set aside for us. So today I call upon you, be patient with God. Be patient with God. That is what David talks about in uh, Psalm 27. He talks about three things that are related to the patience that we ought to have as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, David talks about the pressures of life. Then he talks about patience in life. And then finally, he talks about power for life. Believers have pressures in life. David talks about that in verses 11 to 13a of our text. Look at the pressures that David is dealing with in his own life. He says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemy. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. Then he talks about the pressures of his life. He has enemies on every side. His enemies are attacking him verbally, and they are attacking him violently. He says in verse 11 of verse 12, he says, For false witnesses have risen against me. He's talking about verbal violence or verbal attack. Then he goes on to say, And such as breathe out violence. He's talking about violent attacks. And then it says, because of the pressures, the attacks of the enemy of my life, look at verse 13 in the paper. He said, I would have lost heart. He said, because of the pressures on my, in my life from every side, my enemies are attacking verbally, my enemies are attacking violently, and when I think about all of these pressures coming at me on every side, then it said, uh, I would have, I would have lost heart. What it meant by that is that I would have given up because the pressures were too much. They were coming from every side. And today I want to remind us that believers have pressures in our own lives. We have pressures in life. Sometimes we too are attacked verbally. Sometimes we are attacked violently. 
and there is no way to avoid the financial pressures, marital pressures, coronavirus pressures, church pressures, children pressures, school pressure, pressures on every side. But the Bible says that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and that you want to live godly, that you will have pressure on every side of your life. So I said to you, don't let pressure be the reason that you cannot stand with God. Because the pressures of life are common to every believer. Be patient with God. Because believers have pressures in life. Be patient with God. Believers have patience in life. I said believers have patience in life. And we chose the words of this uh, sermon very, very carefully. I thought about saying Christians have patience in life. But I discovered that the word Christians is used very broadly. And everybody who goes to a building on Saturday or Sunday that has a cross either on the roof or on the wall considers themselves to be a Christian. Well, I'm not talking about those people today. We're talking about those who are believers. Not just those who go to the church house. Not just those who wear a big chain on their back. With a broad spot. We're talking about believers. I say believers have pressures in life, but believers have patience in life. David said in verse 13 of our text, he said, I would have lost heart. I would have given up because of all of the pressures that came from every side. When I wasn't being attacked verbally, I was being attacked violently. And the pressures were so many that I almost gave up. But he said, thanks be to God. He said, unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David said, the reason I didn't give up the reason I didn't lose heart is because I put my trust in the Lord. Yeah. He said, I trusted the Lord that because I am his child, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. I understand that the Lord is on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Then it said, I almost came in. I almost gave up. Because the pressures never stopped. But because I trusted in God, I was able to triumph over my enemies. Because I trusted in God, I was able to overcome the pressures in my life. And church, I want you to know that though we as Christians have pressures in life, that we as believers have patience in life. Why? Because we trust yes. in God. And when we trust in God, we triumph in God. The pressures are many. They squeeze us on every side, seeking our destruction. But I want you to know that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, and you have put your trust in God, when you have trust in God, it is easier 
to be patient with God. When you know that God is on your side, when you know that you are a child of the omniscient God, which means you serve the God who knows everything, when you know that you are a child in the order of the omnipresent God, which means that you know that God is with you right now, even under the pressures that you are experiencing. When you know that you are a child of the omnipotent God, the God that has the power to relieve you, to, to acquit you of your enemies, to raise you above any circumstance of your life, the God that is in you, which may call to say that greater is he that is in me than he that is in me. Well, when well, you know that you are a child of the only sentient God, that means the God that is all wise. You will understand that there are things in your life that you don't understand about all of the pressures, but that you serve a God that in his own only sentient wisdom is taking care of everything that you don't even understand. Believers have pressures in life, but believers also have patience in life. That patience in life is based on our trust in God, and it produces for us a triumph in God. There was a man in the Bible whose name was Job. Job went through unbelievable pressures. Had ten children, all of them died. Was a man of tremendous wealth. All of his wealth was gone. He had health until one day all of his health was gone. And all that Job had was a wife. And his wife came to him and said, Job, you need to curse God and die. Job had no one on his side that was encouraging him to stand with the Lord. But I thank God for the words of Job in Job chapter 14 and verse 14. Job said, If a man dies, shall he live again? He says, All the days of my heart stories, I will wait. Until my change comes. What Job was saying is all the days of my suffering. All of the days of my pressure. All of the days that I feel that I'm all alone in this world. I feel like God is on my side. But I don't really understand what God is doing. But he says that even if I die, he said, I'm going to wait on God until my change comes. What that means is that Job understood. He understood that with God on his side, that his change was going to come someday. And so I say to us, as children of God today, be patient with God. I know you don't understand all these pressures in your life. I don't know you don't understand why they seem to be coming to you alone. But I want you to know that God has got your back. God knows everything about everything in your life. And God is working it all out for your good. Young people, some of you graduated this year of 2020. And I know you don't understand why it was in your year. All of a sudden, there is no problem. Why is it that it was in your year? All of a sudden, no commencement. Why is it that it is in your year that people cannot celebrate you they like they used to celebrate others? But I just want to say to all the young people under the sound of my voice, you may not understand that, but God knows 
yourself. And I said, if you are of good courage, he shall strengthen your heart. Which means that you will find encouragement and empowerment in the law. Believers have power in life. We are encouraged by God and we are empowered by God. What is happening in your life based on the pressures that you have Bills that you cannot pay, legal problems on every side, children that are asking for things, and you don't know how to do the things that they need. But I said to you that there is a power that resides in you as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ. That there is a power that lives in you. That's why God has not given you the spirit of fear. But the Bible says that he has given you the spirit of power. Of love and of a sound mind. What that means is that God has put his power inside of you. To see you through. Whatever you might be going through in your life, David was not the only one who knew about the power of God. I know another man whose name was Paul. Paul understood the power of God. And listen to what he says about God's power in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. He says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask of him. Now, listen now, Matthew, he says, It is according to the power that works in us.
Watching Lifeline, a production of Lifeline Media and United Christian Fellowship of Arlington, featuring Reverend George Effian. We pray you have been blessed. You may join us for our next broadcast right here on YouTube by subscribing to our channel or online at ucfarlington.org, where you can view additional sermon videos. United Christian Fellowship of Arlington is a diverse church for a diverse world. Thanks for watching.